Hello, Randy K7AGE. In this video, we're going to learn about time and clock. So, Bernie, what time is it? You got to take your mittens off? Ah, hurry up. Ah, you're out of here. Over the years, I've received many emails about clocks I have in my ham shack. A lot of people have seen them in the background, like this one above me here, next to me, and wondering what it is and where they can get it. So, we're going to talk about the clocks here, but first I thought we'd talk a little bit about time and how that relates to amateur radio. As you progress in your amateur radio journey, time will become more important. If you're a newly licensed technician, basically probably working with an HT through the local repeaters and such, time doesn't uh, mean a lot as far as tying into your amateur radio activities yet. Uh, you basically use local time with the local time of the and one of your local nets is or that type of thing. But as you move to HF, time becomes much more important. So why is time important on HF? Well, as you, you know, obtain your general or maybe your extra license, you'll be operating on, on HF and you want to keep a log of when you have your QSOs, your contacts, so that you can work towards awards. You worked all states, your DXCC for 100 countries, um, you know, FT8, you want to keep track of the time there and such, which it kind of does it for you automatically. But we need a common time reference for all the hams in the world. And that common time is UTC for Universal Coordinated Time. I don't know how they get the UTC and that mixed up. Or is known as Zulu or GMT. It's been known by a lot of things. So that's this. We're going to use that same time when we log our our QSOs. And why this becomes important is if you use something like Logbook of the World or some other online logging programs, it's going to look to see if the times and dates match up to qualify that as a good QSO. So if I log in local time and somebody else logs in UTC, they're not going to line up and you won't get credit for it. So that's why we use UTC time. So our local time zones are referenced to the UTC time. So the East Coast is five hours behind UTC, Central six hours behind, uh, Mountain is uh, seven hours behind, and Pacific is eight hours behind. And that changes for daylight savings time. Uh, UTC does not change for daylight savings time. It's the absolute. Everything else will change around it. Modes like FT8, JT65, Whisper require very accurate time on your computer, probably within one to two seconds. This is to ensure that the decoding on the receiving end knows when to start looking for the signal and to ensure the decoding uh, functions properly. So. We need a way to set our computers for accurate time. So we can set our computer's clock using an NTP, Network Time Protocol, time server. And that's built into Windows. I'm sure it's in Mac and Linux. Everybody's able to do this. And to get to it, you can right-click on the uh, time icon here in the lower part of the screen and click on Adjust Date and Time. And then here it'll bring up a window, and you'll see the Sync Now button. Um, I find this to be hit and miss if it actually works. You, you know, your mileage may uh, vary. Uh, many of us use a different program to do this. The program I use to synchronize my computer's clock is called Dimension 4. It's from Thinking Man Software. You can bring up their web page and learn about it. So when you run the program, you get this window here. And in this window, you have a lot of control over which time server you want to use. It'll show you how much it's uh, adjusted your computer's clock. You can have it um, automatically synchronize your clock every, say, 15 minutes. Um, I find it very useful. You just have it set so it runs on startup of, of the computer, and it's always running, and every 15 minutes it's updating my computer. My first fancy clock I bought from Heathkit back in the early 80s. They had the uh, most accurate clock kit. And what this really was is a WWV receiver where it scans 5, 10, and 15 megahertz looking for the best signal. And it, it will decode the uh, time code subcarrier information and use that to set the clock and to kind of 
train the oscillator within the clock. Um, for its time, it was a pretty neat, neat toy to have. Uh, I still have it. It needs to be restored. One of the problems with these things is that the uh, a uh, five volt uh, regulator ran very hot and basically uh, kind of um, uh, damaged the PC board and maybe some of the other components around it. So I need to tear mine apart and restore it one of these days. But uh, back in this day, it was pretty neat. Uh, $250 and you solder it all together. And if you have a shortwave receiver, your ham transceiver, you can tune in to WWV at 2.5. 5, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz. So a neat thing to do is to program all those frequencies into your memories in the radio. And you can quickly step through them and take and determine the band conditions. If you hear the female voice, that's WWVH out of Hawaii. The male voice, WWV, is out of Fort Collins, uh, Colorado. And uh, WWV has been on the air for, I think, 100 years, so tune it in. So let's take a quick listen in to WWV. This is 2.5 megs. Pretty noisy. 5 megs, we can hear it. 10 megs, nice and strong. Good signal on 15. Not hearing anything on 20. Let's go back to 10. Female voice is very weak. Hawaii. Male is Fort Collins. There's Hawaii. No male voice. So, WWV on HF. This is an interesting mechanical clock I found in a, in a gift shop. Um, what caught my eye is that it does both local time and 24 hour time for UTC. So the, uh, the white hands are the minutes and hours for local. It's got a red seconds hand ticking away. And the red hand is a 24 hour time. So you can see it's uh, a little after one UTC. So it'll be uh, 128 or 428 local. So this is a Trin Tech, I believe it's called. And uh, there's a lot of variations of this when I started to look online. So this is not a, an atomic clock. It does not receive the WWVB signal to set itself. But it's nice to have on the wall. This is a large clock I bought a long time ago. I think if you go back to my, some of my very first YouTube videos, you'll find this on the wall in the ham shack. There's no brand name on it, so I don't know who builds it or where to buy it. Um, there are a lot that look similar to it on Amazon in places, so your mileage may vary. And one of the tricks I've learned with setting this over the years is that the second seems to zero when you advance the minute. So you listen to WWV, and when you hear the tone, that's when you hit the minute button and put it on that minute, and now you're within probably a second or two. So. It's just a, a nice addition here. I have it next to my TV in my ham shack. This is a fun little clock I bought many years ago. It's from Cube Root. I believe it's called the Tick Clock. Unfortunately, either the clock or the company is, is gone away, but uh, there may be some clones if you look around and maybe some software variations. But well, the way this works is that the number of LEDs represent and the digit. So we see four greens, four blues, four reds. So that's 444. And I have it set so every four seconds it changes the pattern. And if we wait long enough we'll see the uh, red ones change to five there on the end. So this is kind of a neat blinking light display. 
And in fact, the blue LEDs went really dim. And about a year ago, I uh, ordered some surface mount blue LEDs and I replaced them. So, uh, still 444. 444, 445, there we go. So that's kind of a fun thing to have. So this is my newest, most favorite clock at the moment. <laughs> I saw this posted on Facebook or Twitter, somebody had one, I forget where, and I had to have it. So this is from Mixella. It's in uh, the UK, it's a kit. It's 100 pounds, or about $137, which includes shipping. And it gives you year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, and hundreds of seconds. And this is locked to a GPS. The receiver's on the back side. And there's a little antenna here. It's about a quarter of an inch by, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. And it's inside the house here, and it picks up just fine. Uh, the one pulse per second out of the GPS receiver is used to pulse the colons here. Um, this clock can be set up for um, normal daylight as well as a standard time. And this would change here between DST and PST or whatever you would have. And I wrote them, I said, can you make it UTC always and only? And he modified the code and uh, this only runs in UTC and uh, it's pretty neat. I bought some red plexiglass filter material from Tap Plastics and they'll cut it for the size that you want and I ordered multiple pieces with the idea to make a, a box for this but uh, you can see the red filter really improves the contrast. So. Let's turn it up here and see how well it's doing. Zero hours, 56 minutes, coordinated universal time. Cool. Underneath my radio desk, I have this HP GPS Disciplined Oscillator. I bought this uh, a few years ago. A fellow on the Elecraft mailing list was uh, selling this, and it's one of the things I always wanted. And uh, so this is a GPS, it's, uh, which is used to train a 10 megahertz oscillator. And the oscillator becomes very, very accurate. So if you have a um, radio like an ICOM 7610, I believe you can uh, feed a 10 meg reference signal into the back of that to lock the radio to or if you have frequency counters or a spectrum analyzer in your workbench many of those also have a 10 meg reference so it just sits down here and uh, runs I just got it working a couple days ago I have uh, an outside antenna on this you know this is uh, older equipment and uh, it doesn't like locking up with the antenna inside and uh, so I have this antenna that's outside on a, on a pole, so I get a clearer view of the sky. And, uh, and I use Lady Heather software to display a lot of what's going on in here. Let's look at that. So this is Lady Heather software running on my computer here. It connects with a serial cable to the HP. It works with the HP as well as, I don't know, probably a dozen other of these types of devices. When you get into playing with this, you're starting to enter in the the world of being a time nut. Now, I'm not a time nut. Some of these guys are really deep into this stuff. Um, but this is kind of a neat display. Of course, it has a clock here that's running. And I'll turn up the volume here when we approach uh, zero. It's got an analog clock up here, which shows the path of the sun, path of the moons, and path of some of the other planets. Let's, let's turn the volume up. It was kind of hard to hear. 10 megs is fading out, but it changed right on the, the dot. And over here, it shows you all the satellites that it's receiving and latitude and longitude from it, uh, when the sun set and sun elevation. Um, down here is a kind of a, they call it like a heat map. So um, this shows 
the satellites as they're uh, moving through their orbits, it keeps painting the pass on there. And for some reason, I have this null to the north here. I have no idea why the antenna's out in the clear. Um, maybe somebody who knows more about this than I can yeah, can leave a comment. But uh, now this is kind of neat to have running. And here's some graphs of how the GPS discipline oscillator is working inside. So, Lady Heather. So this is ham clock running on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's an interesting piece of software. It does an awful lot. It's like a poor man's Geocron. If you don't want to spend uh, $550 on a big monitor, you can, for the price of a Raspberry Pi, you can have, have this running on an older monitor. And uh, it does a lot of things. I have it currently tracking the ISS space station. It tells me it will rise in one hour and, and nine minutes over my location there. Um, I have this window here. These little displays can, uh, you can choose different types of information. So I'm showing the number of sunspots, which is zero. The solar flux index is 74. And it grabs online pictures of the sun. The time display, when you boot up the program, it cycles through looking for NTP servers. It, checks a few and it finds the, the one it likes the best. It sets the clock, so that runs accurate as well. I just missed the WWV beep, so kind of neat thing to have. If you live along the coast of an ocean, it's nice to know what the tides are. So this is a tide clock, has a normal clock and a tide clock, and it's over a, a topographical map of the southern Oregon coast. So. It's kind of a nice novelty clock. And the last clock I have is a grandfather's clock. And this is kind of special to me because when my father retired from Eastman Kodak, he built two of these, one for myself and one for my sister. And uh, she has hers, and I didn't get my clock until uh, <laughs> both my parents passed away. So uh, I have it now. I think he built this back in the late 80s. So the pendulum keeps going, tick talk, tick. So I hope you uh, were able to uh, learn a few things and uh, find out about the clocks here that I use in my, my ham shack. Uh, it seems like when daylight savings and we switch in and out of that, that uh, you know, after 20 or 30 clocks, I have them all <laughs> in the house reset. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this, uh, please give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Again, this is Randy, K7AGE. Remember, technology is no place for wimps. WWV. All the time, all the time. Same time, same station, every time. WWV. One, two, three, four. Every second counts at WWV. For a good time, call 555 for WWV. WWV for the time of your life. We'll be back with the time on WWV in just a minute. But first, here's another minute.